Good morning, everyone. Oh, dear. <laughs> Not enough coffee. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Good morning Richard. Thank you very much. Um, my name is Richard Stubbs. I'm Chief Exec of the Yorkshire Humber Academic Health Science Network. It is my pleasure to welcome you here to Leeds and to welcome some of you here to Yorkshire. Um, I'm particularly um, and sincerely grateful for those of you working in NHS. It's incredibly challenging times, as we all know, and taking time out of the day job to come here is very <coughs> sacrificial. So thank you for that. And I promise you, we will make it valuable for you today. So you will go back to the day job armed with stuff that are going to make yours and your colleagues' lives better. That's my, that's my promise. Um, as Will said, we've got a great agenda. We've got um, NHS Digital, we've got Nuffield Trust, we've got Leeds Academic Health Partnerships, we've got our National uh, Innovation Fellows, our NHS Innovation Fellows as well. And please, please, please do tweet. Um, so I'm just going to talk you uh, through a bit of a journey for the, from the uh, Academic Health Science Network's perspective. I think this is the third time we've done our III conference here at the Royal Armouries, but it's also a bit of a milestone for us. It's our fifth anniversary coming up um, in April of this year, and I thought it was time to just look back at some of the work that the Yorkshire Humber has done, but also the HSN network has done in this time. Don't worry, this isn't a sight test. Um, you all have, hopefully, copies of our fantastic timeline. If you don't, they're available in the reception area where you registered. Please do have a look. Um, this is specific to Yorkshire and Humber. We've made it specifically for this event, and it does tell a great tale, actually, of where we've come from, what we've done, and hopefully a little bit of, um, of where we're going as well. Um, but within all this, and within all this kind of journey, our mission and our passion really remains the same, which is that we're all about spreading innovation as far and wide as possible, as as and as fast as possible. Um, and over the last five years, at a national level, because obviously we're not the only AHSN in town, um, we've had 1,800 quality improvement experts recruited to our patient safety collaboratives. We've created 500 new jobs. We've leveraged £330 million worth of inward investment for the health and social care and industry um, uh, partners. And we think about six million patients have benefited from the HSN activity that we've undertook. We don't know for sure, they don't come and tell us, um, but we think it's about six million. Um, specifically to us though, um, so just if you'll allow me, because it is our anniversary as you were, as you were just to dwell on a few areas. So I just, just picked out four, four things to talk about. Um, it's always difficult as an HSN to think about the kind of things we're doing and to pick the topics to talk about, but I thought, Four things of interest to talk about from our first five years. Our Healthy Aging Collaborative was launched in 2014. That spawned our collaborative work that we did on what we call the Electronic Frailty Index. That wasn't just Yorkshire and Humber HSN, that was also the University of Leeds, University of Bradford, TPP, Bradford Teaching Hospitals, um, the local Clark, the Improvement Academy, um, and us as well. But the Electronic Frailty Index now takes information from an electronic patient health record and it allows GPs to identify older people who are at risk of mild, moderate, or severe frailty, and then to take action with the information that they've been given. Martin Vernon, Dr. Martin Vernon, who's the National Clinical Director for Older People for NHS England, called the EFI um, one of the most effective pieces of innovation that he's ever come across. Thanks to the work we've done at the HSN, the Electronic Frailty Index is now embedded in all GP contracts across England, and actually it was a fundamental part of our um, application to be um, renewed, Yorkshire to be renewed, as a three-star reference site status for the um, Active Healthy Aging Innovation Partnership throughout Europe. What that means is that because of the work we've done on EFI, Yorkshire and Humber is now actively involved in a discussion with 76 other sites across Europe, all of whom have fantastic innovations like we have around the Active and Healthy Aging agenda. So we're in dialogue with them about what we now can import into Yorkshire to tackle some of those challenges. Secondly, uh, our mortality case note review was established also in 2014. This was entirely shaped by frontline clinicians. The mortality case note review is now in 12 acute and mental health trusts um, across Yorkshire and we use stru structured judgment reviews in the clinical governance structure. And the Improvement Academy, which you'll hear a lot about today, uh, part of the AHSN, is now working with the Royal College of Physicians to roll the methodology out across England and Scotland. And that's very much a part of what the AHSN does. We take, we develop, we shape good practice. But actually, it's about getting it everywhere. 
um, for, for whatever pathways, whatever methods we think is the most appropriate. In 2015, we launched the NHS Innovation Accelerator. You'll hear a lot about this um, after lunch. We've got 10 of our fellows um, with us today to talk about their specific innovations. Um, the Innovation Accelerator is a global search to identify pathway-changing innovations. We do it in conjunction with our other academic health science network colleagues across the country and also, of course, with NHS England. And... Um, since we launched the uh, Innovation Accelerator, 799 NHS providers and commissioners are now using Innovation Accelerator innovations within their own clinical use. Um, the NIA itself has created 77 jobs, won 23 awards, and 13 of our innovators are now selling internationally. And if you are interested in what is in the NIA portfolio, as I said, 10 of the innovators are here later today to talk about their specific innovations. And finally, I think this is probably one of my favourite stories from the HSN, our work on um, improving physical health of people with serious mental illness. And the reason it's one of my favourite stories is because um, it starts with a nurse called Kate Dale, who's a mental health nurse in Bradford, knocking on her chief executive's door one night and just saying, I think we're failing our <coughs> patients um, with severe mental illness in regard to their physical health conditions. And her incredibly wise chief exec sent her to the AHSN. And we've been working with Kate now for a number of years, and it's a much longer story than I can do it justice. But in that time, we've helped Kate to develop a physical health review template. We've produced an e-learning package around the implementation of that review uh, methodology. We've obviously um, given her economic evaluation, and we've helped her to roll the template out nationally and get far greater <coughs> awareness at a policy level of the kind of um, innovation and improvement that that kind of intervention can bring. And Kate is now semi-retired, but up and down the country every week with huge passion for this innovation, helping us to spread it everywhere across England. So that's, um, that's looking backwards. Um, I want to talk a bit about Yorkshire. So um, Yorkshire, it's great, isn't it? Um, more people than Scotland, more people than Norway, New Zealand and Uruguay, while we're on about it. It's larger than Greater London. And our economic output of £88 billion is double the size of Wales. In fact, it's 7% of the UK total. And we in, in Yorkshire and Humber, we probably don't do enough to sing our praises, um, which will come as a surprise to anybody from outside Yorkshire, but that's actually quite true. I don't think we do enough to um, sell the assets within Yorkshire. And I think this is what makes our job so brilliant. It's the ecosystem that we get to play in. Most people, I think, um, will recognise this kind of graphic. And certainly from a healthcare perspective, um, we understand that this is the makeup of the health system that we have within Yorkshire and Humber. But actually, there's more. And you peel away these onion layers. Excuse me. You peel away these onion layers and find more and more assets that are here to assist the health and social care landscape to improve. Vanguards, test beds, the brilliantly newly titled medical technology and in vitro diagnostic co-ops which, of course, we've decided to call Mix. But we've got four Mix in Yorkshire and Humber, which is more than any, any other county in the UK. The Bradford Digital Health Enterprise Zone, which Ian's here today. We've got the Olympic Legacy Park in Sheffield with the Advanced Wellness Research Centre within it. We've obviously got the Clark, the, uh, the, the CRN, three SDPs, four LEPs, five Golden Rings, um, and, and much more than that as well. Um, even here, just in the Leeds city region, we've got three of our most important national bodies. We've got NHS Digital, we've got NHS England, we've got the Department of Health based here in Leeds. In the Leeds city region, we've got over 250 medical technology companies that are operating just in a small geographical area. And Leeds city region actually um, is responsible for 22% of all digital health technology jobs in the country. And that's just scratching the surface. We could go on and on and on. But actually, we don't know enough about the ecosystem that we have in Yorkshire. And we certainly don't sing its praises like the Golden Triangle does. Um, not that I'm bitter. Um, and this, I think, is really where the HSN is moving to in the next five years. Um, I mean, how are we going to be successful? Basically, it's proving David Cameron wrong. We don't all hate each other in Yorkshire. Or at least... If we do, <laughs> we're able to put that aside for the greater good. Um, now, I know that we're the HSN and not the UN, but it's still um, a really important mission. And I think one of our 
invisible job titles within the Academic Health Science Network is we are the knitters in chief. So it's our job to put all this together and it's our job to make sense of the landscape so that people like you, particularly in frontline jobs, we have no time to even understand these acronyms, get to understand how you get the world-class research and innovation that happens on our doorstep into frontline use as fast as possible. So we're your knitters, and this is very much our mission. And uh, there was, I don't know if you caught the news this morning, but there's a reality TV star in America who was speaking last night about a new American moment um, to Congress or something. Um, so I think there's something about a new Yorkshire moment here. There's something about Yorkshire raising its game and not talking about Leeds, Sheffield, Bradford, Hall, York, but talking about Yorkshire. And for me, I think that's a success um, for, that we need to achieve over the next five years. That's how you take on Manchester. That's how you take on the Golden Triangle. When you do a lot of international work, as we do in the HSN, you recognise that in China, trying to explain the difference between Leeds and Sheffield is almost pointless. You need to talk about bigger geographies. When you're talking about some of the great funding opportunities that are coming up, such as the, um, uh, the local health and social care record exemplars, they need populations of five million. It's important that we're completely knitted together and not working in competition with each other, but actually everyone's selling the Yorkshire message. So the HSN is your Yorkshire cheerleader, and, um, and we are your knitter, and that will be our job for the next five years. You might have heard that there's also going to be a Yorkshire international football team. Well, we're not going to go anywhere near that. We're not that stupid. We know our limitations. Um, so finally for me, so... <coughs> What does the HSN do and what will we be doing for the next five years? Well, we do quite a bit, as I'm sure you can imagine, and hopefully you'll see out there, you know, this is our world that we're trying to bring to you today in the Royal Armouries. But there's nine areas of focus that I just wanted to, to finish on and just to um, not say much about them, but just leave them there as, a, as an insight into the kind of focus that we'll have over the next, um, the next five years. So genomics, advanced diagnostics, personalised medicine. Um, we're already responsible for supporting the Genomics Medicine Centre in Yorkshire and Humber. And hopefully the next year, when we speak again, and the year after that, genomics in particular will become part of the daily language about how we start to understand how we deliver care and how we change our relationship with health um, in the county. Research goes without saying we're blessed with some fantastic research bodies. And again, our job is to get that research into practice as fast as possible and to actually inform the research in the first place to make sure that what comes out of the research bodies is of practical use to people with the challenges that we're facing on a day-to-day -day basis. Quality improvement, we're also blessed with our Improvement Academy out of Bradford, um, you know, world-leading um, quality improvement training and capability and capacity building, who also deliver our patient safety collaborative. Innovation and economic growth, um, I think more and more people are starting to get this. I think five years ago, trying to have a health conversation that also referenced economic growth was a difficult place to be. But I think people start to recognise, particularly, I think, as, um, as we look to some of the devolution conversations, as we look to the impact, the, the social determinants of health and what a healthy economy does for overall population health, that people start to recognise that these things are completely linked. Medicines optimization, we've got a brilliant pharmacist in Tony Jameson who runs a number of medicines optimization programmes across the patch. Uh, Medtech, I've talked about... Um, how fantastic it is you were sat here in what we're trying to define as the capital of medical technology for the UK. And what's brilliant is that government's starting to listen and government's starting to say this back to us. Yorkshire is the new capital of medical technologies. So if you happen to see a minister at all in your day job walking down the street or something like that in the next couple of weeks, just say Yorkshire, by the way, is the capital of medical technologies um, because this is what we're taking from London. This is what we're taking from the Golden Triangle. We're trying to push ourselves to be seen nationally and internationally at the forefront of this kind of innovation. Uh, the Innovation Exchange, a big part of our job is getting the NHS and industry to just talk to each other and to find a common language, and this is how we do it. And finally, digital and artificial intelligence. And these are the kind of things, particularly artificial intelligence, I think, that even now people are saying, well, yes, but it's not going to be relevant to me in my career. It absolutely is. Um, if I wasn't here today, actually, I'd be in London um, for a Google DeepMind conference. Um, and what they are doing is talking very practically about how artificial intelligence can be embedded in everyday clinical practice. And this is a now conversation. It's not a 10 years conversation or a 20 years conversation. So part of our job is to help you to explore that. Part of our job is to help you take what sounds 
fairly left field and fairly kind of science fiction and say, actually, it's going to affect our patients this year, next year, and the year after that.